Howdy, Aaron Boster here with the Ohio Health MS Center, speaking to you today about my concerns with traditional escalation therapy in multiple sclerosis. It's all too common that a clinician will start someone with MS on a medicine that is low to mild efficacy, but very safe. And in starting that medicine, they'll observe the patient, and if things go well, then they're a good doctor, and that's a great patient, and it's a good drug. But if things don't work out well, if there's breakthrough disease, well, then they'll escalate to something that, at least in their perception, might be more efficacious, but might have a less attractive side effect profile. And this is thought to be the perfect balance between risk and benefit. I disagree. There are three concerns that I have. The first one is when you say, if it doesn't work out, we'll escalate. What does it doesn't work out mean? It doesn't work out means that the human was allowed to have focal inflammation in the holiest of holy, the supercomputer, the brain that runs the whole body, and they were allowed to accrue brain damage. That's what's happening. You're causing and allowing brain damage to occur. And so essentially what you're saying is, I'll put you on a low efficacy drug, and if, it, if you have brain damage, well then I'll take you off that low efficacy drug and put you on something higher. That doesn't sit well with me. Because you can't give them back the brain that was damaged and lost. Number two, it has to do with the concept of therapeutic lag. Meaning, when you put someone on a medicine, you may not see the benefit or the lack of benefit until years later. And I have a different video uh, that you could look up uh, with regards to therapeutic lag. The problem here is, if you put someone on a low efficacy medicine, and they are allowed to accrue a certain degree of inflammatory disability, that's going to set them up for accelerated brain atrophy years to come. And if down the line you change to a high efficacy drug, it's too late because you've already set the stage for what's going to be happening, and you can't undo that as easily or at all. My third concern with the so-called escalation model has to do with the concept of therapeutic inertia. When you tell someone, we're going to watch you, and if something doesn't work out, we'll escalate, I really have to critically ask, how are you watching? Because I think there's an assumption that you can catch all disease activity, and that's simply not the case. You can have subtle disease activity that the person might not be acutely aware of, or the clinician might not know to ask or might not see on exam, that can sneak by. And all too often, I'll review clinic notes, stable, stable, cane, stable, stable, walker, stable, whoa, whoa, whoa. And so I'm concerned that the ability of our, our clinicians to identify that someone's getting worse isn't as good as it should be. And for these reasons, I raise a question about why we have adopted this escalation model and why we continue to apply it in people knowing full well that applying a highly effective medicine early on has a much better outcome. Once again, it's Aaron Boster with Ohio Health. This is my opinion, and I appreciate you tuning in. If you like what you saw and you want to see some more, subscribe to the channel. Take care. Have a great day.